Welcome to this new video and thank you for watching. Today we're going to cover what C-based formal verification is. In particular, we're going to see what property checking is at the C level. Having a behavioral IP, how to do assertions and especially property checking. So for that, we're going to call the high-level synthesis tool that we have been using so far, Cyber Workbench. And we're going to open a project that we have created before. This is a PCI target uh, interface written in C, C for high level synthesis. So we're going to open the C code and what property checking basically means is that we're going to write assertions in the C code. Here you can see we can sc scrolling down through the code and uh, we have written in assertions. This, the format of the assertion is very simple, just the assert statement as an RTL very local VHDL. In this case we're going to assert if the PCI address, the lower two bits, are not zero we want the property checker to create an error, give us an error. So the two lowest addresses have to be zero. So then we're going to synthesize the circuit first and we see the synthesis report here with the area, the latency and so on that we have been using so far. And now we want to check, run our property checker. We're going to create a property based on the assertions that we've written. We can have more than multiple assertions. So you see the assertion checker. We're going to see if the assertion checker can formally, without running any simulation, but formally can find a counterexample to that assertion. Basically making the last two bits of the of the address of PC address not zero. So you have the computational resources that you can limit here. And we run the property check. You see that it has created a property based on the assertion. We call it PCI assert. And then we run the property checker. So there's no test vectors here. We're just running it formally, mathematically. It's trying to find a counterexample to that assertion. You see here it found a bug. So you click there. You can have multiple assertions. In this case we have one. So it highlights the assertion that contains a possible bug in your code. And then we can open the waveform. This waveform contains the counterexample that will make that assertion false. So basically, will make the last two addresses of the bus not zero. So we go to the waveform viewer here. We can zoom in and see what kind of signals, the, the values of the internal signals, of the IOs, the internal signal, the states, and so on, that will make the address not zero. And in this case, scrolling down here, we can see, we're going to scroll down further. And we're going to see that the PCA address, in this case, is not zero. This is the uh, way from viewer here. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to modify the C code. In this case, we have prepared this example for illustrative purposes. We're going to uncomment some of the code that will make, make the program work correctly. So in this case, we uncomment the bug that we created before. And now we're going to rerun the property checker, but before that we need to reanalyze the code because we have modified it and resynthesized it because the code has been has changed. So we modify this and then we're going to rerun the property checker. And now because we have fixed the bug, we can basically we will see that the property checker will take a little longer to run but will not find the bug. You see now it's running longer because it cannot find a counterexample that will make that assertion uh, false. So in this case it takes longer and it's checking for any counterexample for that particular assertion because we only have one assertion in our code. And you see that it finishes without any errors. Let's see a little bit more. <coughs> and it finishes and it did not find any bug for that particular assertion that we have in the C code. So that's one, of, one way of doing property checking. Now, the um, property checker high-level synthesis tool used in this work also can uh, check uh, typical property, typical uh, bugs uh, for you. So it has some templates built in. Uh, in this case, we're going to check, for example, if you have unreachable if clauses or else clauses, you're writing outside the boundaries of an array and so on. So for that, we go back to the property checkers option and you set the assertions, the automatic assertions. We click that and then we select the items that we want to check, like, like for example, array violations or multiple assignments or uh, unreachable if clauses or uh, go to statements. So the more options you check, obviously the longer it will take the high level the property checker to run. So then we call this new uh, new property like PCI uh, templates. Just click OK and now we're gonna rerun the property checker and especially these only these properties that we have selected. So we run the property checker now 
and we're going to see the first thing that gets our attention is that it takes longer to run. That is obviously because the more options you check, the longer it will take to run. So you, it has to check many more options. So you will see that it takes a little longer to run. But this is one of the beauties of um, property checking is that you don't need any test vectors, any test benches or anything like that to check if your circuit is working. It, everything is done mathematically and you don't have to know about input vectors, or create a test bench or anything. Now it has finished 25%, 50% of the checking, 75% and now it will finish and display in a dialog window any problems that might, it might have encountered. So you see the dialog window here where the, the yellow circles and the green ones tell you that there was no problems or just warning error and the red one tells you that it encountered a problem. And if you click there, it highlights the source code where the problem is. You see, it highlights the source code. And you see this is in the PCI and the IF clause here. And that's been, maybe you can see the switch case of the address. And the case statement is the opposite of the IF condition there. So you basically never execute the IF condition because it's the opposite from the A case condition. So that IF clause is ne not reachable. Right, so this is one of the, the errors encountered in the source code so that you will never actually execute the if condition because it's the opposite of the case condition. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please send me an email or check our website. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.